Greetings, everyone. Wolf here with another episode of 1.14 Minecraft. And here we are getting back into the swing of working, working, and working. Last episode, we took a little bit of a break. Got uh, some talky talky out of the way. But now, we're going to be working with spiders. <laughs> My family just loves spiders. Anyway, um... Right next to the tombstone, we actually have a spider dungeon located underneath our little tree farm here. And not too far away, over by the river over there, is a dual cave spider spawner that are close enough to each other that I can actually put them in the same collection system. So this project is, I'm going to be working on both areas and turning the spider dungeon into a string farm with auto kill. And the cave spiders, I'm going to turn into a XP farm in which we're also going to gather the string and spider eyes from. Probably not that we're going to need a ton of that stuff, but hey, you know, we have it. Well, might as well as make them. So let's uh, take a look at these dungeons and spawners. And here's the spider dungeon right here. Now, the good thing about the spider dungeon is in order to do the auto kill by dropping them, I only actually have to drop them 19 blocks mm -hmm. for them to instant kill. So luckily enough, that is going to be a lot easier than dropping them, such as a zombie or a skeleton, which, which is 24 blocks. And as you can see, I've already got a hole naturally dug all the way down towards the bottom, which is really good. So that'll be helpful to get around digging this whole thing out. And here we are over the location for the mine shaft and the cave spider spawners. As you can see, they're both on the same level, which really makes this build a little bit easier. And they are definitely within 16 blocks of each other. So I can actually stand in the center location between these two, and they will spawn spiders for me. Now, the good thing about this one will be, I don't have to worry about dropping them since I'm making it into an XP farm. I just have to be able to funnel both spawners and uh, the spiders that's come from them into one location and uh, so i'm not dropping them we will be collecting them into one area and then killing them with a sword all right now when i dig these systems out i am actually going to be digging one more block more than i normally would with the dungeons i normally do the four plus replace one wall i'm actually going to dig out five and then replace the next wall over. And once I get that all dug out and start setting that up, you'll see why. All right, I got the um, first dungeon dug out. And I want you to see the differences that I've got here in this one. Uh, in the ceiling, the layer between the wall and the ceiling is going to be left open, as you can see here. And then the drop chute is going to come down into the center section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these stairs and place them upside down to get myself a 3x3 three three hole that the spider is going to fall down into. So simply we're just going to place these down like this. I'm going to create this ring. Just like so. And what that's going to do is the spiders can grab onto the walls and climb up and everything. So what I'm trying to do is force them to fall down and into a hole area where they can't grab onto a wall or anything. So I'm going to dig this out, not as a 3x3. Three but as a, um, essentially a five by five, and then drop them down to 19 blocks. All right, now, the feature that's going to be unique to this, which is why this is one more block wider than a normal dungeon is, is because I'm actually gonna use water curtains. Since spiders can climb up these walls, I wanna be able to prevent them from doing so, or if they do climb up there, I want them to drown and then their drops will fall and be collected. So essentially what this space is going to be used for is going to be water streams all the way around and creating a huge water curtain throughout this whole entire thing, pushing the spiders over here to the center to fall, which is why I need these fence gates. And we can put these in place, which will allow the spiders to fall through, but not the water. So just open all those up and then take that out. And then I got to dig the drop chute. All right. Let me get that done. All right, everybody, the hole is now dug, and now it's time to get the water cart in place. What I also did is the corner pieces I stuck also one column going down there, as you can see here. That'll help um, because there's no sense putting any water here anyway. You really want the curtains to go along this section right here. All right, so we have to place the water 
each area. You're going all the way across on all. It's going to be a little glitchy here, guys, because the water is going to try forming and everything like that. And um, when it does that, it uh, glitches the system a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the area with these half slabs, just like so. All right. So let's get that in place, and then let's get underneath. The water curtain is now all in place. All right. As, uh, as I was putting the water curtain in place, I've already had a couple spawning in. Because there's just enough darkness in the corners here to get these spawners to spawn in. Now, what we need to do is get the rest of the farm operating. See, look, it wants to spawn something in the dead right there. Right next to us, as a matter of fact. Okay, so what happens, before I take this, uh, uh, first off, let me just explain one more time. If, by any chance, a spider forms and crawls up these walls, it's going to try to get out here thinking there's an air block, but there's not. And if it stays there, it will drown. And the drops will fall and, of course, fall down into our collection chamber, which is exactly what we want. That's why I build these ones with water curtains. All right, let's get these torches out of here without falling ourselves. This is always the fun part. And there's another little, he's climbing, he's climbing, see what happens. And then, okay, he's freaking up in the corner there. And now we have complete total darkness. He's trying to get to me is what he's trying to do. And one little thing that happened is he's going to drown in there. Okay. So let's get down underneath and get the final components in what uh, we need to do to get everything collected. And here we are at the bottom of the shaft. Um... I derped a little bit. One thing I forgot to tell you guys to do is make sure you put blocks on top of the spawner so the spiders don't form up there. All right, if you can see from here, I don't know if you can probably see or not, but I, find, I did put blocks up there. All right, so now we're all the way down here at the bottom, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hopper system in here. If you don't have the iron to uh, use hoppers, you can put a minecart hopper rail system down here. Dig down one more block, so make sure it's 20 and then put half slabs down there, and then put the, the minecart underneath those half slabs, and that'll collect your uh, goodies for yourself. All right, so let's actually get going here. All right, I'm going to put a barrel here. Uh, I'd rather have the thing facing out so I can see it open. I like the animation. There we go. Okay, that torch is going to have to go away. And then I'm going to have a center line here facing into the barrel. And each of these facing into the central line of the hoppers. Uh, the last set. And there we go. Now the reason why nothing is falling or spawning right now is because I'm I'm below that threshold of the 16 blocks. Remember, we have to drop them 19 blocks in order to kill them. The threshold for the dungeon seeing us is 16 blocks, so we're actually three to four blocks below the center range of the dungeon. So I have to actually go back up to spawn them back in. But this is show we've got nothing in here. I've already had a couple pieces of string, one spider eye. I think it's because I punched one of the spiders. That's probably why I got that one. Uh, all right, so let's get back up top. And here we are back up top. Let's just go in here one more time. It's probably going to be a little dark, guys. I apologize for that. But I just want to show the, these, how these guys are falling and stuff. And falling. Of course, he wants to get to me. He's actually using... I think the water... Here he goes. <laughs> I think he was using the water to try to stay up like we do. All right, so... I just wanted to quickly point out, once again, make sure you cover the spawner with blocks so nothing can spawn and fall on top of the spawner itself. Alright, so now what we need to do is I now need to go over to where the cake spider system is and do the same exact thing you see right here, but times two. The only thing that's going to be different is how we funnel them. Alright, so let me go over, get that all dug out, get it, all of this stuff set up, and then we'll uh, see how we're going to channel them into an area for XP collection.
And here we are, guys, over at the Cave Spider Dual Spawner System. As you can tell, since we're on top of it, how fairly big this uh, box is. All right, let's get down and inside and see what I, all I had to do. Now, you know, digging this out, getting the curtains and stuff up was the easy part. Figuring out how to get the spiders to funnel in where I wanted to, that's a whole nother story in itself. Unfortunately, it took a lot of time. And well, because you have to uh, really get the water mechanics to work the way you want it to. And it takes a lot of time and redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. And unfortunately, what it made it a little harder for me in here is I don't have uh, any inch hands on my boots to help me walk in the water. So anyway, let's take a quick look at what we got here. Alright, so we have our two spawners that are within range of each other, really close, and on the same level, which really did help. Now, I may have uh, hurt myself by dropping this floor three down. I probably could have gotten away with doing it just two, because it made it really tight towards where I'm trying to flush them into to kill these guys. Um, when I go to the other side of this wall, I will show you what I'm talking about. So anyway... Um, what I did is I went out the, you know, the standard amount to get the uh, water curtains in place and have complete total spawning in here. And then, after looking at all my water dynamics and digging out the floor in a specific pattern and, and getting up these fence gates to hold this water stream up so it doesn't like make this disappear and everything and then flow everything into the center. That's the key, is you have to get the uh, channeling system in place so that that the fence gates and the carved floor working tandem together to get the water flowing in the proper direction. Alright, let's get this block out here because it affects it just slightly. And if you actually look here, luckily enough, there are no dead zones in this whatsoever. Everything will come down and flows in all of directions. Now, can the spiders get caught here on this wall? Yeah, eventually they can. But if they crawl up and get into the water stream, they'll go all the way up and of course then they'll drown. And if they have any drops, they'll fall down and be collected in our water system. Now down here, um, I actually have half slabs here uh, to help funnel these guys down into this gap here. Now, normally I would try to fight these guys straight into the chute, but because of uh, trying to guarantee I'm in range of that spawner right there, I actually had to turn my uh, capture chute so that um, my range and ability to just stand there and let them funnel in had to uh, uh, develop this little turn system here. And what I did was is eventually just kept playing with the water mechanics until I got the proper flow so that they go into the chute. All right, let's get out of here. Um, uh, unfortunately, I wish there was there's a tutorial to, to show you on this, but there really isn't. It's really just a matter of playing with the water mechanics and learning how water works and flows and stuff, and then just carving out and, and, and setting up this, the sequences. Unfortunately, I couldn't record all that because it was a long, long time. Because I've sorry about that, guys. I had to um, figure it out. As I went along, and of course that meant, uh, you know, building one style, tearing it down, building another one, tearing it down, so forth and so forth. And this all will get cleaned up to you guys. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm just getting it set up so it functions. Now, just so you understand here, let me go back up top real quick. I'll show you this real quick. This is the um, sensing ring for the far left, far right smaller over there. All right, and then this one here is the sensing ring for the spawner on the left side. All right, so that hollow stone you see right here actually is my um, ring going down underneath to give me an idea of, since I'm, I'm actually below the spawners now, the spawners are up there, and I'm below them, I think, oh, I don't know what, five, six blocks. <laughs> So, uh, when I had it out here, I originally had it coming out this way, I was technically almost out of range. I could stand, like, in the far right corner and still be in the center range of that far right spawner. Um, I didn't care. Come on, get out there. 
I didn't care for that, so what I did was, that's why I came up with the idea of turning this funnel tunnel, funnel tunnel, okay, that's a bit of a tongue twister, I guess, and then uh, getting these guys over into here, all right, so, as you can see, we have nothing in the chest, now let's go knock out those torches, and uh, start, <laughs> before I start killing these guys, I have been trying to work on a Banes of Arthropod sword just for this build. Normally, when I try to enchant swords, I get beans of arthropods like crazy. As you can tell, I have knockback on this, which makes it a little harder to kill these guys. I don't recommend knockback when you're working with these spiders, at least in here. And I have yet another. So, anyway, um, I can't get beans. I got beans of arthropods one. I was like, uh, okay. Alright, so I'm just going to completely knock these guys out. And they should start forming. There goes one right there. And he's kind of get after me. Okay. Okay, we got some more forming. Of course, they're going to form because I'm inside where the spawners can actually definitely sense me. So, let's get out of here. And as you can see, as I was knocking around, the how they were flung right into the chute the way we wanted them to. And I have to get this all protected, as you can tell. They can actually hit you from those corners, by the way. So be careful around those corners. You can actually want to put blocks and stuff up there. All right, let's get all this stuff out of here first before I do it. All right. Kill these guys. Hopefully the noise isn't too bad for you guys. Now, good. You did get stuck back there. There is the... Because of the way the shoot is designed, there is the possibility of that... See the guy in the back there? He's just kind of chilling. Um, sometimes eventually they will come up. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's just one after another. If I have sweeping edge, beans of the pods, unbreaking, and mending on this, I mean, I'd just be killing this right now. All right, let's get rid of that guy in the background. So all we're going to do is we're just going to shoot him. And look at that. And in comes the XP and the drops and everything else. Now, I put this chest here to help know where I need to stand because these guys have a striking range that if I'm actually a half block closer, they will poison me, and I don't want that. But I do want the XP, so this, I mean, look at it. just one after another, after another, after another, after another. It's just unbelievable. And I got, what, 29 levels right now. I'm trying to hit these guys so they don't poison me so I can try clicking this XP to show it to you real quick. Now, the downside to a farm like this is I can't shut it off because I don't have a light system that'll turn them turn this more off. Okay, so we got a whole level out of just that what couple seconds of farming these spiders, and already 19 pieces of string and six spider eye, and that was what just a couple of seconds. I mean, you know, with uh, with looting, um, beans of arthropods, and of course I'm breaking mending and stuff like that. This this would be a pretty killer farm. All right, guys. That's it for this farm. Let's, uh, let's get away from all this noise. And just, ah, see, now see how they poisoned me? How close I was to that? Let me just get this XP here. Okay. So, that's the one that you have to be careful of. If you want, you can have like a little chest of milk and stuff next to you if you need it. Oh, the only thing is, that is a very noisy farm. So! Okay, and that's both farms in place. And I, there's another slime around here. I have to find them again and kill him, get more slime. All right, guys. So both farms are now up, working, and operational. So I can get my string. Um, I use that. I'll use that with the fishermen that I have over the local village over there. Get some emeralds out of it, and of course I'll be able to make my bamboo uh, and a couple other things that we're gonna need the string and stuff for. And of course I will have my cave spider XP farm here, along with my skeleton XP farm. And eventually I will probably get a hold of a cave spider spawner head. So. Um, it was kind of a long build, digging all this out. I went through a whole diamond axe just doing that, and um, getting that water mechanic. And that's what really took me the longest on this build, was getting that water mechanic below us set up properly. I mean, listen to them. They're still spawning like crazy. That's the thing about this, this farm, is these things will just keep spawning and spawning. And that's why it's actually not bad for early game XP farm. He's trying to use these cave spider spawners, dungeons, and stuff like that. Alright guys, 
uh, it's enough of me rambling on and everything like that. So let's uh, end this episode and get over to our next episode. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Y'all take care now. Bye. And you guys thought I was done. <laughs> well, the comment that I can't shut these uh, spawners down didn't sit well with me. So I came back here and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What can I do? i got to figure out a way to get this turned off. And since I built these uh, like I would a normal dungeon, um, I have one extra layer in which the spawning doesn't take place in. So, that gave me the idea of being able to place the redstone lamps one level below the ceiling, which is what you see here. And I've been in here now for a minute to two minutes of standing here, and absolutely nothing is spawning in. Not either one of these. So, let's uh, get up top real quick, and I'll show you what I did. Now, you got the standard two in the middle. And then you have the uh, four on the outside. Let's get up here real quick. And what I did was, on a diagonal from the center one, you go out two, one, two, and then the third one is where you put your next lantern. And that's essentially what you do all around it, and that will take care of the lighting within the spawning area of the cave spider spawner and I'm going to hopefully test this also with the spider one and I'm thinking it might do the same thing. Alright guys, so quick little note there and I told you to get it. <laughs> Alright guys, y'all take care now.